Campbell Church Sr. shared his passion for exploring the Alaskan wilds with his children, primarily his son and namesake, Campbell Jr. By this time, my grandfather had him so indoctrinated, you know, on Alaska and adventure and cruising and all that, that uh, when my grandfather was ready to ease out of things, he just set my dad up in business to run charter trips. Gave him the westward, he bought him some other boats, and he gave each one of his daughters a flat amount of money equal to what he'd given my dad. Dedicated to the 1930s equivalent of adventure travel, Campbell Church Jr.'s Alaska Coast Hunting and Cruising Company was a serious undertaking. It was a faraway place and the westward was a unique, unique vessel up there. Nobody had ever seen anything like it. Nobody had ever come up there hunting and fishing. I mean, he was actually the advent of today's uh, cruises to Alaska. He started it all. Church catered to American aristocracy. His clientele included some of the most prominent names in early 20th century society. The guests arrived clad in suits and dresses. Uniformed stewards served afternoon tea on silver tea service. When it was time for adventure, they traded their finery for oilskins and high-topped boots. The men went off to hunt. Deckhands were assigned to entertain the wives and girlfriends. It was, to my surprise, really, a, a very serious and well-run enterprise. They had a number of boats. They catered to a very high-end clientele and ran an extraordinary operation southeast Alaska with the westward and a number of other boats. They had capable crews, well-organized programs, they knew the country, they knew the hunting and fishing, and they uh, ran a first-class operation. He gave him the boat uh, in the very early 30s, prior to the Depression, or right during the Depression, and uh, as far as I know, my father never had a problem uh, chartering that boat out, even during the Depression. My father was, uh, he was very charismatic. Uh, my mom was gorgeous. And the two of them, uh, they just uh, wooed these, these multimillionaires, these famous people. He had the banking money, the, the Mellons were up there, the uh, Hollywood crew, the Big Crosbys, the Phil Harris's, Fibber McGee and Molly and Amos and Andy and all the famous people of that era. Walt Disney was there. He's, uh, and my dad uh, became good friends with Walt Disney just because of the, their interest in filmmaking. And in fact, my dad has contributed film to Walt Disney. And I wouldn't be surprised if some of the documentaries or the movies about the great Alaskan brown bears aren't some of the film my dad has come up with. The typical guest, as I understand it, would come out from the Midwest or the East Coast in a private rail car to Seattle. And they would, their board westward head up for this grand adventure, bringing back when they returned uh, salted hides and trophy fish. The crew was probably a half dozen. She certainly would have a captain, a cook, and an engineer. That's a bare minimum today. Um, additionally, they had, in the forecastle had accommodations for the guides, and I recall that there were typically two guides for the guests and also accommodations in the forecastle for a valet because someone who arrives from New York or Chicago in a private rail car undoubtedly has a valet. The number of guests in those days, and I, I recall there were three cabins and I think probably the typical complement of guests was five to eight people. 